Uh, I'm telling you, coffee is the engineer's best friend. Uh, he sounds more like an addict every time we do this. Guys, look, I'm going to let you know, this is going to be a damn good show. But I will say this, though. Caleb Anderson, we were supposed to have an interview with him later today. He rescheduled, totally, totally understandable. Um, you know, per, his personal life, ha you know, uh, came in the way, so... And I'll give the man respect. Uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, we get to see him in the next episode, or maybe two uh, once he's uh, finished his uh, his business. But yeah, uh, for those who don't know, Caleb Anderson, he is a guy who was actually trying to keep the servers or the official server <coughs> for Gun and Battle Operations Troy alive. A game that came back, who came out in two thousand eight, it basically is the blueprint for the battle operations we play today. So. Really looking forward to talking about him. Hopefully, like, you know, uh, it's going to be the highlight of the episode once he's on. But, yeah, uh, I'm your host, Freedom, and uh, we, I'm here with my other co-host. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves? What's going on? It's uh, CJ here. No it's special introduction, just me. It's your boy, CJ. It's, it's your boy. It's, it's the C and the J. And then there's the T and the J, but... You also know me as the Xeon boy. Come on, what's up? Guys, you're embarrassing me over here. <laughs> you guys remember that? Well, why not make it awkward, old, huh? uh, <laughs> You guys remember the old Vine where it's like, hey there, it's me, your boy, uh, Skinny Penis? Oh my gosh. Am I the one that remembers well, that? We're, we're not saying anything's wrong with a skinny penis. I mean, I'm not saying I, I know what it's like, but... I'm gonna have Everybody. to tell. Uh, I'm gonna have to beg we, for Susan at we, YouTube not to demonetize this episode. <laughs> we appreciate all all peens and beans. All right, everybody deserves love. That's right. Look, we I'm just saying, it. if a girl sees a five inch long snake, like, whoa, that thing's huge. Wait, how the hell did we got to talk about this? All right, look, <laughs> you know what? What it is? It's the strike freedom that got us excited because uh, so there it's the is the strike freedom. It's that strike freedom. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm gonna agree with you. That strike freedom that's coming out. The what is it? The uh, MGEX? Yeah, MGX, man. They're using like, oh, they, they say it's like gold plating and stuff. Like, I'm going to buy one and just like melt it down, I, sell it for gold scrap. I was so careful. Know. Apparently, uh, according to according to some some horribly written lore, you might cause a nuclear meltdown and explode on contact. Be careful, bro. Oh, that's yeah. why that's yeah, why there's an off switch. The off <laughs> yeah, there's an off switch to it. Yeah, we're turning the reactor off yeah. first. So. <laughs> okay, okay. Right, yeah, we we already uh, we already came prepared for that. Our, I, I almost said uh, sunrise, but they're not going to be called that anymore after uh, what April first is when they're changing that. Oh my goodness! Uh, I, I think that's what it was. Yeah. Would you hear for I that hate... episode? I don't think he was. No. Yeah, uh, sunrise is changing their name. Oh no, yeah, I knew they changed their name, but sorry. I got a bit captivated like, by that frame from the Strike Freedom because I, I hate that thing. But I think at this point, you might as well leave the armor off because at that point, it looks better than with the armor on. Oh, it looks sick. That looks so good. I can't believe I said that in the same sentence. Yeah, Strike just, Freedom looks so good in just, the same sentence. What? Yeah. And the actual, uh, <laughs> and the actual like with the, with, the, uh, with the skin on it, I'm going to just say the skin. It does look really good, man. It looks real Dude, it looks Ooh. good. Looks good. So it is the <laughs> highest metal expression in the history of Gunpla. So uh, it says here the MG is a high end brand that pursues in the ex extreme oppression, which is what EX apparently stands for in it, of the of the mobile suit under a certain theme by combining the. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm stupid. I, I don't know this word, but climation of Bandai uh, Spears technology and different materials. Yeah, technology of high end plastic. Um, well, actually, no metal. Uh, the second model, which is the Strike Freedom Gundam, will feature three types of special processing, two types of metallic uh, uh, molding, and etched stickers for a total of six patterns that will challenge the depths of the metal expression. Ah, I don't care for stickers. Experience, it's gold. 
That thing don't even need stickers. So it says here it has copper gold coating, white gold coating, yellow gold coating, metallic molding colors, which is within two, and etching uh, stickers. It will come out in uh, spring 2022 on a worldwide uh, full-scale release. I'm looking forward to it. I really am. Oh, that would look so good. I'm not going to get it. It looks pretty neat. Uh, Um, (laughs) Is it just me, or does uh, the picture in the top right, like the biggest one, look like some weird Evangelion stuff, like the head? I, oh I yeah, I yeah, it, yeah, it kind of uh, does. Yeah, it looks like his mouth is about to like yeah. bust open and bite me or something. Has oh. more of a face. Yeah, yeah, exactly. To it. Yeah. Oh, wacky! <laughs> uh-huh. Hey, if you guys in, if you guys, by the way, uh, guys, if you're watching this, uh, if you're watching this episode, if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you doing? Hit that like button at least, or hey, comment, 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 comment. See, right now we have Wacky Modder eighty four talking about the free dumb. Which, by the way, if you guys look in the Discord, if, uh, Discord. If you guys haven't joined the Discord, the link is in the box below. I did put down a, uh, in the chat or gallery that it's a Rick Dom mixed between a Freedom, and I call it the Free Dumb. So check that oh, out. You have to say it right, the Free Dom. Yeah, the Free Dom. Free Dom. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like chat's already taking a hold of that. <laughs> oh my God, the Free Dom. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, hey, wait, look, destroy free dom said, gentlemen, behold. <laughs> God, I love the game. Thank you community. for taking one for the team. Yeah. So we have a lot to talk about, um, especially about EA. Yeah. Uh, Battlefield 2042. <laughs> that seems to be like a topic lately. I really try not to keep them in topic. I, sw- I, I really do, I swear, but it seems like every week something comes up. Um, by the way, uh, Ubisoft. Uh, let me talk about them real quick. I don't have a I don't have a segment on here, real, but I'm gonna go ahead. Ubisoft. Uh, they're doing pretty bad compared to last year. Their sales overall is now by 31. percent Um, I believe they That's they a huge drop. It is a huge drop. Um, you know, which I'll be real with you though. They the last like what year or two they've been they've been facing a lot of delays. Um, you know, a lot of projects. I mean, Assassin's Creed, pretty successful, you know, but really, other than that, what else did they really have? Watch Dogs, um, personal opinion, was definitely a um, disappointment. If you guys haven't uh, played the latest one, it's definitely a disappointment. Uh, so I've th- literally not even heard anything about it. <laughs> how bad it is. Uh, it's, but you know what Watch Dogs is, right? Yeah. 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 Um, well, the newest one oh. is definitely not the best. Well, it seems after to be getting the first one. one. The first yeah, one? After the first one? Yeah, after the first one, it was just like, mm-mm. Yeah. Mm-mm. I knew what this was going to be. It's just another one of those games that are pushed to be something revolutionary, and then it just becomes mediocre, because that's exactly what that game was. Cool idea. Mediocre game. Yeah, it's definitely a mediocre game. Um, so, other than that, Assassin's Creed is probably like the best thing. And I know they put out a statement. <laughs> it's basically like, you know, why is nobody wanting to buy us? <laughs> because, you know, with this move, like what Sony did and Microsoft did, Sony's kind of like, well, you know, we like our independence. <laughs> People are like, who the hell asks if you like your independence or not? We don't want to buy you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought I thought it was funny. Um, but, yeah, that's what's basically what's going on with uh, Ubisoft. But as for Battlefield uh, 2042, um I kind of had to talk about Ubisoft for a second. But as for Battlefield 2042, um, EA executives are blaming Halo and COVID for, or Co- I'm sorry, Kobe. Ah, shit. <laughs> well, there goes YouTube. They marked me for that one. But yeah, they're blaming uh, Halo Ooh. and they're blaming Kobe for uh, Battlefield 2042's failure. Honestly, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> why? 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 I mean, seriously, guys, they delayed a scoreboard up till March. Something that's so simple. I could probably just... I could go on Roblox and build one for them if they want me to and give them the source code. <laughs> yeah, but it definitely wasn't the Nobody time. Passed, we do it. <laughs> yeah, it definitely wasn't them forcing uh, DICE to push the game out. It definitely wasn't them not, giving, not taking the time to develop a game properly. It was definitely Halo's fault. Well, they basically said, like, who cares? You know, uh, Battlefield is only 10% of our profit. Remember, they said that. 
They said, you know, a battlefield is only 10%. Then why, why worry well, about blaming others? I mean, come on. Well, I'm just, I'm just going to keep not supporting them until... It becomes a hundred percent because I, I hope no one I hope no one supports that because that's EA Games needs a reform and uh, I think us as gamers should force it out of them. Dude, as of right now, and I've recently looked at the numbers. As of right now, Battlefield One has more of a player base than these guys, and this game is new. I mean, come, what's ba okay? I don't know what the hell is EA is doing. It's and the fact that. Look, they're blaming on their game engines. All right, game engines is probably just too old. And upgrade it. Literally, just upgrade it. You guys literally own the software, right? Look, I, I, at the, I'm at the point. These guys really just don't care about their product, and really, and you know, if they don't care about the product, they really don't care about the customer. Are they still using Frostbite three? Yeah. No. <laughs> Sheesh. <laughs> Oh, yeah, That's, I didn't realize they're still using Frostbite 3 no Yo, you know how many games have been running off of that yeah I know well, like, what? yo that, that's that been wasn't like Need for Speed wasn't like Need for Speed for, uh, most wanted running on that engine or something like that like they've been using like for rivals and past Need for Speed titles and wasn't that like Mirror's Edge and like what? I, I thought they got to like 4 or something. That's crazy. That's actually crazy. Unreal Engine 5 came out before freaking Frostbite 4 did. That's actually really sad. It says here that it Battlefield 2042 uses the new version of Frostbite Engine but it doesn't tell me which one. It does it use Frostbite 3? Is, is there a 4 out? Is there... They, they hit it. They're hiding it. If they're hiding it, because... Like, it, it makes sense. <laughs> that's that's really bad. Yeah, Frostbite 3. Oh. Oh, no. Yep, Frostbite 3. Uh, Battlefield 2042 uses a new version of Frostbite Engine. The exact version is unknown. Um... I don't know. That kind of reminds me of uh, what they say about. Oh God, what did they say? Which game? I don't know. I forgot. Look, I don't. I don't see them pulling a, a No Man's Sky sort of thing or a Sea of Thieves. I really don't. Oh no. I really don't. See, I'll, I'll be. I'll be real with you. When when uh, <clears throat> when No Man's Sky came out, I I was mad. I'm telling you, I felt like I was cheated. I felt like I was robbed. Speaking of Rob, we'll talk about what Sony did recently. Yeah, I felt like I was robbed. Uh, it it took me, even up until now, I'm still hesitant on trying out some of the some of the uh, things that No Man's Sky. I mean, look, I, I they made a comeback. I'll be I'll be honest with you, they made a comeback. But I'm still hesitant on coming back into the game because of what they did in the beginning. They had a terrible launch, a terrible launch when they first came out. So. And the fact that, you know, I didn't didn't the EA uh CEO said, you know, the game release for uh for this was stable, it was all good, um, tip top shape, whatever. Yeah. Oh gosh, this been something game was stable. So long I I don't really remember. Yeah. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and get back on topic. I'm gonna go read this article. Um it says here, while the game has its fans, there's no escaping the fact the wider contracts uh, 2042 launch has been a disaster for EA. Uh, fan reception has been hostile. Player accounts has dropped like a stone. Hell yeah, it, had, it did. And the company won't even disclose on how many copies of the game has been sold. Yeah, they won't disclose it to their investors. That's another thing. That is another thing. They're, I want to know where my money's going. Yeah, I mean, like, hey, man, I'll give you, like, $500,000. Where's my money go? I want, to, I want to know how many copies we sold. Or at least tell me how many we got refunded back. Um, let's see. While the game haven't been has been haven't been out for three months now. Holy shit! I didn't know it's been out for that. And things are far from improving. A report from X Fire says that EA executives uh, recently held an internal town hall meeting, where not only the game described is as a miss, but a number of reasons uh, are forward during his launch. Uh, with all, this is all in order to try to plot a path 
For the mess, remember the game isn't. <clears throat> remember games this big aren't allowed to die. I don't know. It's kind of doing that in itself pretty easily. It's on life support. Uh, first up, here's the kind of admission that you don't see very often in the industry about games on this scale, even if it's an, it's an eternal meeting. EA Executive, Battle for 22, acknowledging EA's wider success, both past and present, but it's really important to acknowledge uh, we have missing... I have no idea how to say her name. Uh, this is certainly the, uh, the case with Battlefield launch, which failed to meet expectation with our players and also clearly missed our own expectation. Uh, moving to the factors of blame, uh, the launch, everything. Look, wait, right here. I, I actually talked about the Fire Sprite. And the Fire Sprite uh, version were, was so old that they had to go back and update it. Did you hear that, T-Bone? Wow. Yeah. Moving on to the factors of blame on the launch, uh, woes. Uh, so... The executive uh, cites everything from the Agent Frostbite engine. The Frostbite version they were <clears throat> they were on was so old that they had to go back and update it. Uh, so it was basically putting the game on a new engine. To the pandemic, um, which I'm not going to say much because we're going to get flagged. You, YouTube's very uh, on their on the rules it specifically says that it will flag you for saying those words, um, which is crazy. Let's see. Uh, to the uh, bug count. Look, I'm not going to read much into this besides like the fact that they did blame Halo. They brought up Halo, which is a game that has its own problems. It's just very funny. And it is. Why Halo? Why, why, why blame Halo? You're basically telling your, <clears throat> your customers like, hey, the reason why we failed, the reason why we didn't update the game, the reason why... We didn't give you the um, the playable experience that you guys deserve as paying customers who's going out paying seventy dollars. By the way, these games ain't cheap. Uh, six uh, seventy dollars no, US no, and how not. much in uh, Canada now? Canada, Devon. On um, games are about ninety dollars now. Ninety dollars, okay. Ooh. So ninety dollars in Canada. Holy cow! I mean, why? I mean, if you guys look, this is why. I urge people, especially players, to watch reviews more and more from now on. Companies are, are, are using this type of an advantage, saying, hey, guys, since the, it's the new generation consoles, uh, we're going to go ahead and up our prices by $10. But it's okay. You know, you're know, you still getting the same garbage as la as you, you was paying for $60 for the last gen. You know what I mean? Arguably like, lower quality, too. Yeah. Yeah, they're up and up prices for and... giving people like a, like a shit of a game. I'd be real with you. And, you know, games running on engines that are, like, six-plus years old already. Yeah. So, really, what's the difference at this point other than which console it's made for is what I wonder. Um, I actually just read that uh, the Frostbite engine is no longer has numbers. It just is <laughs> uh, Frostbite engine. So... It's pretty much the same thing, probably since three. It's still probably running on three. It's just an updated version. I guess it's for marketing purposes, because I can't see EA using it for any other reason, because they haven't proven to us as they haven't proven to us that they're actually developing this thing and making it much more advanced. I also heard that it's hard to work with. The forces are all like rumors, aside from the actual frostbite number thing. But yeah, I heard it's also hard to work with, so that could be leading to some of the trouble they're having. And developing games properly yeah but like the the way the way that it came out though it's they never really okay i'll be i'll be honest with you look at battlefield 4 battlefield 4 had a rough launch it really did i'll be real but man they made a quick comeback after that and people are playing battlefield 4 the old game they came back like and how long one. ago and one yeah more than they're playing this game and that really tells you something it really tells you that the experience that battlefield has now is not the same as back then and if they really don't care about this system like like the, this ip i think they should just sell it sell it to sony sell it to microsoft sell it to somebody who could actually turn it into something that we the player base used to know and love Rather than be like, hey guys, you want this gun? Just this one gun? Okay, that's ten ninety nine. Go ahead, pay ten ninety nine. Oh guys, look, 
we understand this game is like seventy dollars now but if you want you know the other half of the story you're gonna have to pay another 59.99 you know and it's bullshit mm. <sighs> for 59.99 in addition i better be getting like <coughs> addition just as long as the core game honestly yeah, good luck with that yeah, and yeah, it's also another thing that um, that Sony is doing, by the way. So Sony, um, the Horizon, the new Horizon game that came out, <clears throat> um, mm. by, it's a good game. But Sony announced that it will be the last, uh, it will be the last game to do that the ten dollar discount. You know what I'm talking about? A free upgrade. Mm-mm. So if you buy the PlayStation Four version uh, for it, um, you get a free upgrade to the PlayStation Five. Now the reason why uh, I'm mentioning that is because the PlayStation Four games are ten dollars cheaper compared to the PlayStation Fives. Mm-hmm. So people will go out and buy the PlayStation Four games to get that free upgrade for the Five, because it saves you ten dollars. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, and honestly, it does still uh, it still screws a lot of people if you think about it. <laughs> Because a lot of people would just go out and just buy the straight PlayStation 5 version and be like, oh man, I paid 10 more dollars for this. But yeah, so they said that um, Horizon will be the last game that they will be doing that. And, you know, now games are going to be, you know, $70 now. Um, which, there is... It's not official, but they said that it could be on the grounds of uh, some lawsuits. Let's put it that way. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> And also, speaking of that, I know that when it comes to Battlefield 2042, there's... Oh, man, I think we talked about it last week. Last week, it was almost at 200,000 signatures. I don't know where it's at now. For refunds, by the way. Oh, for the refunds? Yeah, for the refunds, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, no no joke, T-Bone. There was a petition uh, last week that it was... At the time, it was like 190... Rounding it up, r- roughly, 195,000 signatures signed to have EA uh, to do refunds because... You know, there were talks about it, making it free to play, um, and other things about it. Which would have been unfair for, for those who, you know, paid full price. So. Uh, yep. <sighs> yep. <clears throat> if you guys are listening, man, comment, comment, comment. We'll, we'll, we'll try to read every comment as much as possible that's coming out. It's a cursed time to be a gamer. It is, man. Don't. Yeah. <clears throat> and and seriously, look. Don't. If they're doing this, <clears throat> don't. Oh, my bad. I'm trying to clear my throat. Don't give these companies your money. I, and look, it, it already sucks because they're already holding your money hostage. If you think about it, they already have your money. So you're gonna have to. They're gonna be like, oh well. If you want your update, you're gonna have to sit and wait, basically. And it sucks. I hate when they do stuff like that. All right. Um, another news. <clears throat> All right, unless you guys have anything uh, last second about that, anybody in the comments have any questions? I've only got something about games, but I think we'll be coming up on it here shortly. Um, what I mentioned right before we started. All right. Yes. <clears throat> I got you. I got you. Oh wait. Um, speaking of gaming, do you guys hear anything about like when Nintendo's doing something about like removing their older games? <laughs> Mm-mm. Um, all I know about Nintendo recently is that they're shutting down support for the 3DS store. That's what it was. I believe. That's what yeah, it was. and after um, they're saying stuff about Pokemon, if you have older games, PokeBank, if you have it installed before the shutdown, the big wipe happens. I think it was March 23rd or something like that. Um, if you have it downloaded to your your DS before the wipe, you'll keep PokeBank, and PokeBank services will still exist. So y'all, if you got 3DSs uh-huh. and you got some valuables on them games of yours, make sure you download PokeBank. Yeah, I know I do, oh, wow. and I have it. So y'all better get to it. Yeah, because remember, all um, hours gone. Yeah, because I know players were like urging Nintendo. I was like, hey guys, is it your you know your job your op- you know to keep? It's pretty much like their obligation to keep their older games alive. Yeah. Um, I kind of do believe that in a way. You know, it's just some people out there just, just loves their older games. I mean, me, dude. Like, for example, I love Encounters in Space. And, um, you know, Gundam versus uh, Zeta Gundam. They're old, but they're, but they're gold. 
it's stuff like that, that I, I enjoy playing. So, I mean, those are just for examples, but I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that just loves to play, like, you know, um, games that are similar to, let's say, Nintendo 64s or anything like that. And I think they're going to make it specifically a uh, subscription base. Like, you don't have to pay for your subscription mm. for some of their older games, um, which I do. I do have all that. I do enjoy the, uh, like, the Sega games on my, uh, on my Switch and all that. I just think it's kind of crummy and that's if that's a word i could use i don't know i don't know i'm not smart that's why i have you guys there <laughs> all right uh i think that's it for that one all right so next one up so uh we're going to be talking about this about we're going to be talking a little just a little bit about the halo series so apparently <clears throat> they're going to be doing a face refill and they confirmed it I don't know how I feel about I'm that. Chief? Yeah, Master Chief. I'll be honest. I think that's one of the nice things that they've done is that they've never done a like face reveal in any of the games. Yeah. I think it's like that. Like the torch, the torch has got to keep on getting, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I'm just wondering like how it's going to be done. So they already confirmed that, um, he, you know, they're going to do a face reveal off the Master Chief. Um, I believe they say actually multiple times, but I could be wrong. But I, I don't know. They they already they already renewed for a second season, by the way. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, I'm probably not gonna watch it. Really? <laughs> not. I mean, like you don't want to you don't want to see him, uh, you know, ride down in that tall hoe with an AK-47. <laughs> No, uh, no. You know what? Honestly, at this point, if it's ta- if it's talking about nothing other than some colony and some some little kid who somehow is able to make more of a difference yeah. in that situation than Master Chief himself or a Spartan squad, like I, I'm not interested. See, this is that- just another washed out blockbuster type show trying to push an agenda. But the only agenda that needs to be pushed is that the Covenant are here to conquer the universe and control the rings. And the UNSC is here to stop them. That is the only agenda I need. Now, if you're going to talk about like civil war from before the Covenants are invading and stuff, and talk about con- um, planets like Harvest and all that stuff, or maybe if they made the books into a show or made the books into movies, hint, hint. I don't know what Microsoft's mm-hmm. doing, but just make the books into a movie. I'm not interested. I don't want to see this garbage. If it's not canon, it's just not. I'm not I'm not watching it. No, it's a waste of my it's time. Not, it's not canon, but I, I think the only reason yeah. why they're saying it's not canon is because they're they're going to be taking a risk. And I do think it is a risk. I don't mind risk, but I just don't like the way that they're pursuing it. It's a cop-out. It. Yeah, it's a cop-out. Yeah, yeah we, I mean, which, which we did talk about this. Um, man. I don't know. Um, you know what I mean? Like, what? Master Chief has been out, what, like 20 years? Give or take? Approximately, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we never seen his face. And I know some people say, well, we've seen something through his eyes or helmet or whatever. It doesn't count. We don't. The thing is, like, have you. Okay. I'm going to throw out a movie. But um, you guys ever seen him? Uh, it's, it's a low budget movie. It's about $10 million. But it made about fifty nine million dollars back, you know, worldwide box office, just enough to where they made a sequel. Oh, excuse me. You ever heard? You guys ever heard of Jeepers Creepers? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I love that movie. I really do. I actually just seen it the other day, um, because I was like, you know what? This was like a low budget movie. By the way, the director, uh, the reason why you don't hear about it as much as anymore. By the way, they're making a four, a fourth one this year. <clears throat> Um, another studio bought. Oh, really? uh, yeah, another studio bought the rights, and they're kind of doing like a soft reboot. So when the first movie came out, it was a low budget movie. It was ba- it was roughly or loosely based on a true story. Um, about two, which director got the idea from, two siblings seeing a uh, guy. Well, it happened in nineteen ninety six. The regular story it was based off of two guy, uh, two siblings, a brother and a sister were driving down the road, and they seen a guy trying to hide his wife's dead body and and he's seen them and he followed him for miles upon miles 
So he got arrested. Um, this is basically what Jeepers Creepers was based off of. And, you know, he used a lot of practical effects. And they kept a mystery. And I think that's what made Jeepers Creepers so successful was nobody didn't know what this thing was. Nobody um, didn't, you know what I mean? People were questioning, making their own fan theories, stuff like that. And I think that's what really made it, you know, successful. And over time, it, it gained a following. That's what I think of Halo. You know, with him, you know, people are theorizing, thinking, you know, I don't know who's under that mask. Um, you know, who is John 117? Think about his story. And a lot of people think, you know, the, his past is more interesting what's going on now. I do think that. Some people, anyways. Um, and that's what makes things really yeah, successful. Like, hmm? wh- like, why is he the man? What's the background to it? And I'm sure they dive into that in, like, the books and stuff. But, like, give us a visual on it, you know? Yeah. Um, like I said, I, I don't necessarily want to – I mean – I think the mystery is what makes him such an interesting character, at least from the bit that you get from like the games. Not, you know, I'm sure there's a lot more to it again in the books, but oh. you guys remember watching, uh, like the, oh gosh, I don't know, like Powerpuff Girls, one of those uh, cartoons on Cartoon Network way back in the day, where there's always like that one character who you could only see like from the neck down, and you could never see like their faces. Oh, or like cow and their, chicken, and uh, cow and chicken was kind yeah, of like that. yeah, like. Yeah, and you didn't even spend time like paying attention to the actual other characters or what was going on in the episode. You'd just be like, "Man, I wonder what that person looks like." It was like a it was like a topic of conversation. Uh, the uh, the rebellious Axel uh, says, "At least it's not the rings of power." Yeah, I'm not looking forward to that, but I do want to give it a try. I like look. I'm not not going to watch him. You know, I, I want to watch him. I sort of want to give out my own judgment. I'm very about story base. Like, it has to be based on the story. If they're changing anything, I wanted to explain it. Like, if Master Chief is going to take off his helmet, I want him to explain why. Is he, like, something like the Mandalorian first season where he was dying, they had no choice but to take off his helmet. You know what I mean? I want them to explain it, not just take off his helmet and just... Man, the air is really nice out here. You know what I mean? Hello, child. Yeah. I am Master Chief. But I'm not... The world is in your hands. Removes helmet. <laughs> <laughs> it just ends. Oh, I won't even have it that would. music. It won't even it have that would. music. Remember, it won't even have the music. Oh yeah, it doesn't even have any. Of... Oh, so it's gonna be like some. Uh, <laughs> not unless. I mean, it's not too late. It's not too late. Gonna hear some um, some salsa music. Oh my god. And then he just starts uh, his his suit his suit starts glowing uh, Christmas color lights and then he starts dancing to the doing the cha cha. So, I think, um, <laughs> I don't know. Hey, uh, <laughs> Tavon, uh, do you, you, you seen any of the Lord of the Rings, right? Yeah. Um, be real, be real. What do you think about the series? Uh, why do we keep rounding back to this stuff? I'm, I'm curious. Like, will you watch it? I'm just wondering, no, will you watch it yes or no? I'd rather watch Lord of the Rings 100% over the new Halo, okay. uh, TV show. All right. I'm probably going to dip my toes into it to see how how contradictory and chaotic and ridiculous it is, but I don't have any high hopes for Halo. I'm I'll just I'll just put on my rose-colored glasses. My rose What was it? What's the what's the term? What's the term called? I don't know, but like um if you don't have any high hopes, you can't be disappointed, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's one of the terms. All right. Um, like, oh my God, Master Chief! Oh my God, come on in! Oh, this is the best show ever. Ten out of ten, perfect. Has yeah. elites. Yeah, I should just be like that. I think I'll save myself trouble. Hmm. Now, the reason why I brought up uh, the Lord, um, I was going to bring up the uh, Lord of the Rings, by the way, and the reason why is because, so I found out that, uh, excuse me, I, I found out that. They sort of are doing an error that they're not supposed to touch, apparently. So, I'm so, I wonder I wonder how that's going to work. Um, it, and you know, Amazon recently said I think I told CJ it was here for I think you was too, is that you know we're pretty much doing this on our Amazon said themselves you know we're doing this our way. And I really don't like that sort of mentality towards uh, 
somebody's IP. Because that's like um, whenever George Lucas, so, I mean, here's the thing, you, you did lose the rights. It does suck. But at the same time, it over the years, it did create a fan base. At least respect the fan and then respect and respect the lore. Um, so whenever George Lucas, and a lot of people don't know this, whenever George Lucas sold Star Wars to, um, to you know, uh, Ricky the Rat, um, Ricky Rat, it pretty much like uh, he he gave him like three upcoming movie ideas. Like, hey, you know, I got these uh, ideas for the next three trilogies. You guys want to take to consideration? You know what I mean? He was put it. This is the man who created a worldwide cessation. You know what I mean? It, that made a fan base worldwide, and also a, a community group was based off of the uh, off of Star Wars. You ever heard of the Five Hundred First Legion? Yeah. Yeah, you know they go to birthday cool parties. Group. Yeah, great group, man. Um, believe it or not, like somebody and some of them in the neighborhood around my neighborhood, they have the five hundred first legion stickers. Like they're they're from like they're in the five hundred first legion. Um, and you know I'm like, wow, that's you know heroes, in my opinion. Um, you know because they you know they stick to the lore, they help kids out, um, who those who are in need. It's great. So. You know, Disney pretty much like said, okay, we'll take it to consideration and just tore the papers and just tossed it. So, my goodness. Yeah. Um, and it sucks. I really don't want them to take it as be like, hey, you know what? Um, you know, this is not an IP anymore. It's, this is just business. And I hate that. I rather I rather have them create, um, not create, I mean, create their own work rather than mess up somebody else's. I want them to stick to the lore. The lore is very important. Um, that's what I'm trying to get at. And you know, if something is not fixed, you know, if something's not broken, don't fix it. Um, you know, J.R. Token. I don't know much into. I, I haven't read a whole lot into the books i mean i was probably like 12 13 years old whenever i've read a little bit of tolkien's books so it's been a long time um and i noted and i i, I did watch the amazon's uh kind of like the, like super fan uh video um uh, about it i wasn't impressed it was very cringy and i don't know i i will still watch it I really will. I will still watch it just to, you know, because it's just the creator in, in, inside me. I want to make my own movies and stuff like that. But at the same time, my expectations for it's not going to be high. And it breaks my heart that I say that for something that I really like. But, and what made me really like lower my expectations that they say, like, you know, hey, we're not doing it off a token. We're basing it off our point of view, but for token. I'm like, that's not how it works. You know, that'll be like, t let's say I want to make a movie about your life. I'm serious. Uh, let's say I want to make a movie about your life. How you wake up every morning, you go to work, you clock in, and, you know, and for some reason, like, everybody loves that story. Let's say everybody loves your story. You know, and a lot of people, and, you know, you want to, and you're, let's say you're humble, you want to stick true to your story. But I'll go ahead and buy the rights to your story, to your world. And just basically shit on your breakfast. Literally. I mean, that's basically what they're doing to the fans. They're shitting on their breakfast. Yeah. And they're really and and the fact that they're really disrespecting their fans, it's not really a good way to to gain impression and views. Um and merchandising as well. And I, I've been reading some of the comments that a lot of the actors and what the studio has been saying, and it's it's bad. I really do think it's bad. Um, you know these, and you know the fans. These are the people that look. Amazon's going to pay four hundred billion dollars for this project, and that's not including buying the license, which costs another two hundred fifty million. And right now, the Tolkien family has the gaming studio. Uh, right now for another 200 million to give people the rights to to build you know lord of the ring games um which i don't know who's eyeballing it you know i don't know if it's going to be amazon or any other company because you know amazon does make their own games 
Um, I I just don't like people taking it and put uh, like taking a story and shoving it in their faces like, hey, this is mine now. Um, so I'm gonna add this. Um, look, I tried it. Like I said, I don't want. Uh, I do usually try to avoid certain topics in the podcast, but I really don't like uh, you know people putting like any ideology, political views, or whatever in inside of these works and shoving it in people's faces. Um, you know, and a lot of them will shove it into your face. I don't appreciate that. Fans are not dumb. Fans are not stupid. A lot of fans just want to come in, sit down, and just watch. You know, a world that Tolkien. Tolkien really spent his whole life creating this world, and it gets so much in depth. Like uh, I actually spent over the week learning more about it because I want, you know, I want to know more about the lore. Um, I know something about there's two trees. I got you know uh, um, that where it got the story that created day and night, made a life cycle. Um, you know, it created even the races. It was actually very interesting, and I really enjoyed reading it. Um, and the fact that Amazon is, and that's, I think that is why the guy got fired. I mean, they, Amazon did say he got fired over an NDA, which means he disclosed something that he shouldn't. But the fact that, you know, the Tolkien families are very protective over J.R.R. Tolkien's um, story. And the fact that they're touching a story that allegedly they're not supposed to be talking about or touching kind of is very disappointing and it disrespects J.R.R. token i really do think that um and same thing that about you know star wars i think you know whenever george lucas you know wanted to help out they pretty much just smacked uh his hand you know and say hey you know what you have no say so anymore um which is true it sucks but it's true but at the same time this is a man that created a whole you know Created, created a fan that will be loved by generations. Man, y'all got me in a little rant here. I got a little deep in that. Um, passionate brother right here. I am very passionate. I really am. I'm passionate. You know, that would be like taking Jeepers Creepers, like I said. You know, it did create a following and then make him a pony. No, you know, this guy is not supposed to be cute. He's supposed to be an unstoppable creature. Why make him lovey? Why make him a joke? Which that's why a lot of people hated the third movie. There's other reasons as well, but we won't talk about that yet. All right, right now, um, it had, but it has something to do with the director and his criminal criminal past, um, and it caught up with him. But you know that's why a lot of people hated the third movie because it was so comical, and they're like, you know, why? Why? That'd be like making Jason a comedian. Jason Voorhees, Friday the Thirteenth. Um, so. I kind of just don't want anything to do with, uh, like, Lord of the Rings, like, whenever I watch the trailer, it looks great. I just don't want anything to have it be shoved in your face, and I got a feeling it will. And I really don't want Amazon paying for over almost a billion. Like, they're already talking about five seasons. They're already talking about production costs being over a billion. <clears throat> I don't want them to pay a billion-dollar mistake. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes these big ass corporations <clears throat> need to learn the hard way. And they do. They think spending the money is going to win. Yeah, and they do. And I think, you know, unfortunately, I think they might make their money back. If they do, I'll be I'll be real. I'll be surprised. And you know, if it's I'll admit it. If it's good, it's good. If if it's good, it's good. I will say that. But respect it. That's all I'm saying. So Jason goes a <laughs> minute. All right, Zebra69 says, so Jason goes to Manhattan. Yeah, that's one of them. Uh, the Red Axel says, uh, tell that to Ryan Johnson. Yeah, yeah, the Fakuda of Star Wars. Yep, Ryan Johnson. Now, look, I'll be real with you. I was okay with The Last Jedi up until, but there's a lot of nitpicks. The Last Jedi, yes, it shits on Star Wars. It really does. I like the concept of it, but again, it shoves a lot of things in your face, like... The horse racing uh, scene, they made um, uh, General Hux a joke compared like how he was in The Force Awakens. And, you know, and they killed, you know, spoilers. But, you know, uh, I'll go ahead and say it. But they killed Snoke. 
And when they asked, you know, Ryan, like, why did he do it? He said, well, it's no different what they did to the emperor, you know, um, which is true. But at the same time, it, it is different because nobody at the time didn't know who the emperor was. There was no prequels to explain who he was. So the fact that, you know, they did that to Snoke just to do it, you know, again, pisses me off. All right, um, that's enough of me ranting. Um, uh, anybody, do you guys got any questions about the Halo series? Nope. Nope. Uh, Tivon, I promise I won't uh, rant anymore. Stick to stick to the game. Stick to the game. Stick to the game. At this point, I think Halo Five is gonna is Halo Five is better than what that show is gonna be, and that's oh, saying a lot. So, man. Um, no. I'd rather I'd rather play Halo Five than watch that new show. <laughs> so, hey, I'm just saying, I better said, I better see uh I better see um <laughs> I better see Chief like go through orbit and like crash landing or some shit. <laughs> yeah, man, better plummet <laughs> into the into a super cruiser and do some crazy shiznit. I don't want to see him. Getting punched by another elite, and then the little girl comes around going like, "Chief!" And then some some weird ass thing comes out, and she does some weird space stuff and saves Master Chief. I don't ever want to see that. Watch her I, like be able to that. pick him up and like throw him around like a rag doll. <laughs> you may have years of training, <laughs> but <laughs> yo, there's gonna there's gonna be some bullshit. <laughs> well, like a gotta... chieftain fights um chief, and he's like he just. He's beating the hell out of Chief. Just some random Chieftain. Not even a high high ranking one. Just just a random Chieftain. He's gonna be fighting Master Chief, beating him to a pulp. Little girl comes around behind his back and stabs him with a little um short dagger and kills him. I bet something is gonna happen like that. I bet. Something silly is gonna happen. Nah, I'm I'm, I, I'm pretty sure she's always gonna, pull that garbage. I'm pretty sure she's just gonna climb in that Tahoe and run him over. <laughs> <laughs> all right at this point three for three needs to put the tahoe as a skin for the warthog in halo infinite like oh. it, it needs to happen i like if i think they would get brownie points if they did that i think it'd be really funny yeah well or something like it all right well let's get on to the next topic mm -hmm. brownie points hopefully uh so this sculptor is accusing disney of stealing his artwork for the, uh, I guess they're selling a 50th anniversary because what is Disney Disney's 50th anniversary now? Is, is that? It? Yeah, I guess it's Disney's 50th anniversary. <laughs> so in a viral TikTok, a sculptor uh, alleges Disney stole his artwork and selling copies of his design in the parks. Uh, TikToker and sculptor Andrew Martin. Posted a video Saturday comparing his work to merchandise uh, found at Disney uh, World. His video has since reached over 635,000 views. Holy hell. <clears throat> uh, in the video, Martin explains that he created a fan art sculptor of one of the characters from the Enchan uh, Enchanted t uh, Tiki Room, an attraction at the Disney Parks. He published his model of the sculptor on um, Dangiverse. I don't know what that is. A, uh, a file sharing site, oh, okay, so others could 3D print and build in themselves. Uh, that was in 2018. Now Disney World is approximately selling a figurine that is in the same Tiki Room character, and Martin says the design looks eerily similar to his. Martin points out the same notable design, small cuts, dents, uh, conjoined uh, circles that are identical between his model and Disney's statues. Yeah, that looks very uncanny. I look at it. If you see the video, he actually goes like close up onto it and like details that he he made on a person like certain cuts and angles on like some slashes, the number of slashes. I mean it it is literally his his work. Like he goes into so much detail on yeah. why it is his and and how it is his and how there are way too many similarities for it to not be the case. Yeah, and um, I'll make sure I'll act, I'll actually just make sure to uh, to post his uh, TikTok um, in the description box below because I'd rather have him have that video. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I did see that video and it was crazy. He was pointing out everything. I could probably see maybe one coincidence, but like if you look at this man, it's identical. Um, oh my gosh, man, that's not even subtle. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, this kind of reminds me of what the Resident Evil did, remember? <laughs> Capcom? Remember? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when I seen this, I, I just first thought of that. Uh, so he said, Andrew said, um, it did look a lot like mine because it was because it is mine. Martin said in the video, Disney is taking credit for my work and selling it in their parks without my permission, consent, or even get the artist credit. Many uh, commentators were supportive of Martin, uh, Martin, I mean, and called for Disney to pay him for his work. This is insane. I really hope they compensate for your work. So, I think they actually do own the, like, the, how, how would I put it? So that'd be like you creating your own custom Gundam, right? Your own Gunpla. And Sunrise or Bandai, I mean, stealing that work. Like stealing that design and making it their own. That's kind of what's going on, I think. So the fact that they're doing that, it is kind of scummy. It is. Uh, you can sue for the credit and conversation, uh, another wrote, Disney is in the wrong. Others pointed out that Disney has a history of stealing artists' work, and they do. They actually do. If you guys read a lot of, um, a lot of Star Wars novels, they do have a record of stealing artwork. Yep. Uh, sorry, my wife, said, or, yeah, say wife, my fiance. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, let's see. Um, they allegedly do this to Star Wars fan models. I told you all the time. Uh, when you use a comment, a YouTuber, uh, Exarch Ladders. By the way, if you guys um, never heard of Exarch Ladder, uh, yeah, Exarch Ladder. Uh, he is a YouTuber, and he's even a lawyer, I believe. And he made a lot of videos about you know uh star wars still in, you know artworks and everything so whenever that ball i showed you it may or may not you know just be taken from uh sunrise so or bandai at least so go ahead and going on some users commented that disney has the right to use martin's design because martin copied him first it's true this was disney design but you know martin made a model of it uh, but I'm not a lawyer, so I really don't know how that would work. That's, you know, my opinion. Uh, but as Martin shows in the video, he published the design under a Creative Commission license, or Creative Common license. The license allows him to make and share designs based on Disney's original characters. As long as he and anyone else uses his design, doesn't sell them, or, give, or, or gives credit to Disney. I think Disney did this whenever um, Baby Yoda, something to do with Baby Yoda merchandises. Uh, I, I remember they did something like this similar. So let's see. Uh, Martin also explains that his work was probably stolen by a freelance artist contracted to design the figurine. Uh, so the most likely thing is the thief was some lazy waste of skin. <laughs> Talentless hack that got himself or herself an easy payday of stealing my artwork and passing off their own, Martin says. The Daily Dot has reached out to Marvin via TikTok at the con and the contact from his website. We also reached out to Disney via email. And that's all they, they have. All right, well, so what do you guys think? I mean, don't no, I'll talk at once. Yeah. So, as it would turn out, my mic's been muted for a minute. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyways, hey guys. <laughs> uh, let, 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 let's back okay. up here for a minute. I was messing with my mic, trying to get it to go. I had to turn it off. Anyways, um. Basically, you were asking what we think, what we think of the situation in regards to like what should happen. Mm-hmm. Um. I mean, I, I don't. 
think they need to pay him per se because he literally uploaded on like a free website. <laughs> Did he? But oh, I mean, yeah, it's it's there for free. You can download it for free. Hmm. Like you can download that to your three D printer right now and and print it. But I'm pretty sure that's the case. At least I don't think he was selling it. Uh, let me check. But go ahead and what's it? What's his full name? What's his the uh, what's the thing he's what's the website he put his stuff on? Um, Thingiverse, Thingiverse, Thingiverse. I don't know. I, I, I don't think. I, I mean, I used to do three D modeling, uh, like with three D prints and stuff like that. But oh, okay, I know what it is. Um, let's see. yeah, I was pretty sure he had had it uh on there for free, but. Just the fact that Disney like literally straight up copy and pasted it and is making money off something that he created well, while yeah. he's not even doing it. <laughs> well, I they think also that's... said that it could be a freelancer because so with freelancers, you know, they're looking for artwork or whatever or modeling. Yeah, like Disney will hire people to go in and, and <laughs> do these things for them. Yeah, it could be somebody, um, you know, still in that artwork. Yeah. So let me find. Oh, by the way, there's somebody in the waiting room I just saw. Uh, let me see who. Oh yeah, it's um it's, Free Dom. Uh, Zaku. Zaku. Um <laughs> Let me see. You know what? So mm -hmm. by looking on his page. Hmm. He has made models from other franchises that exist already. Wow. I don't know. It just, I don't see anything about Disney making money off of that stuff. Except for oh. just using it. But he takes other ideas from already pre-made stuff. And he makes 3D models and stuff on there. So I don't think he's in any. he has any right to actually ask for compensation. You think when, so? No way. Did he come up with the design first? Or did Disney and then he just used the design to make the model? So, he made it first, I think. No, well, it says here that it was based off of um, Enchanted. And then that's what he made the model of. But he okay. engraved it particularly. You know what I mean? Like he engraved it. Okay. So from what I learned in copyright back from at least when I was in school doing Photoshop and all that. So it's kind of similar. Um, okay. Since he's technically using a design that's based off of something Disney owns. Disney doesn't have to do shit. Pardon my friends, but they don't have. To. No, no. Go yeah, ahead. I think I think he's being so greedy. I think he's being greedy and trying to exploit Disney, being a big company, to make money off of it, off the situation. I don't think he deserves any compensation, because a lot of his works and 3D sculptures are already from other franchises that exist that were not his, of his own idea initially. So I don't think he has any reason to be a little baby and cry online about it. He's just trying to be greedy, in my opinion. I agree in the fact I don't think he needs any compensation for it. Um, I, I do think it is definitely kind of lazy, though, how, how they did. Like, w w nobody's going to contest the fact that that is literally his model. But I do think it, it was quite lazy that that is something that ended up happening. Um, well, I, mean, I, don't think, I don't think he deserves any money for it, though, no. Yeah, like, that's that's his... Okay, so, yeah. I don't expect anything better from Disney. But then he, doesn't deserve, he doesn't deserve compensation. Yeah, if he went and to I, court... Honestly, if he went to court or Disney, if he, if he had made the design and the model first, he'd have a very good chance of winning. <coughs> Since he didn't yeah. make the design first, he just engraved it. Any court will look at that well and say, hey, well, you stole this original carving from Disney and just engraved it. You have to pay them money now. Sorry. Bye-bye. Have a nice time. Yeah, this definitely this isn't one. this definitely isn't like the Resident Evil thing. Totally different. Yeah, that Resident Evil thing was clearly like copy and paste. It, like it was legitimately copy and paste of, of original work. Whereas I, I guess to some extent, this isn't really original work, other than the item itself. But the idea and like the design of isn't what was, original, what what the model was made of, is not technically original. That's something that was it's like pre-existing. 
But I have heard Disney doing like taking fan made designs and turning it into their own projects. I have I have seen that personally. Um, especially People like people really need to start trademarking their shiznit or something. Yeah. See, my question Cause... is that. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say, I was gonna say. So, like, if I were to let's say, <clears throat> let's bring Gundam in this. So let's say I made my own customized Gundam, right? Like my own colors to it, my own design, my own everything. Uh, would Sunrise have the right to use that? I'm just wondering, just curiosity. So you'd have to make it original, in my right. opinion. So if you if you're inspired by Gundam, mecha designs are very vast, so it's easy to make your own thing. But you can be inspired by a lot of things. So that's fine. That's yours. But if you take it from if it looks as close to a Disney thing as this one does, and then he just made a little model out of it, I don't think you're winning that one. Personally. Really? I don't think you're winning that. Honestly, like, let's take the Gundam example here, for instance. Like, let's say if you modeled it yourself and 3D printed it yourself and just made it look sort of like your own custom Gundam, like, you didn't copy anything but you made it your own custom Gundam but you modeled the thing yourself and you 3D printed it yourself and then they copied it then they could probably get in trouble but that's also kind of touchy because they have different copyright laws in Japan yeah that's true too yeah I was just curious um... I also don't think Bandai would be much of a, an asshole as Disney would be in my opinion just depending on what you're doing though it all depends, because my only thought is if you like just made a custom Gundam and made it on model kit parts, like Bandai model kit parts, and said, hey, why are you copying my Gundam that's model kit parts? They're going to look at you and say, well, because you're using our model kit parts to make the Gundam. <laughs> yeah. So overall, I think Disney made the design first, but if I, if I, read, if I read this article right from and his statements... Can you send me your article real quick if you can? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I close out of it back and get it back up. Cause yeah, no, if he, Disney made the design first and then he just took it and engraved it. He's technically plagiarizing Disney's work. And I just realized I need to renew my voice mod description. So, no more soundboards for a while. Oh. Oh, dang. No more. No white bass sound this time. <laughs> uh, um, by the way, I think uh, Kaizan's in the waiting room as well. Yeah, he is. Okay. Um, also, I'll get yes, welcome. A Do you want me welcome, to Destroyer Freedom. Yeah, if you could bring him in. I'm, I'm getting the article for you right now. This is a different article, but it's... They, uh, the other article referenced the Daily Dot. Up, dude? So. Thank gotcha. you for the invite to this. Oh. I mean, you were uh... really very, very quiet, Zaku. Like. Who? What? I posted it in the, uh, in the Discord chat. With the idea of, like, copyright and everything, copyright is a very, very complicated issue. I don't have the full stats or anything to go over all of that. <coughs> the main thing is, if this thing was... Cr if this thing was created by him, first and foremost, of art design and everything, then this is blatantly his work, and Disney did steal it. Inspired is... Inspiring is a little difficult. I don't have the full levities to perfectly do it, but I do say that it is his work and that Disney did steal it. Well, from what the article is saying, he copied the design and then engraved it mm -hmm. himself. So technically, if he just copied the design from Disney and then engraved it and made his own custom engraving, he technically stole Disney's work. Mm -hmm. There is a little bit of reverse. That's why I that's said the way I'm I not, see it. Yeah, that's why I'm not prelaved to the idea of 100% giving 
perfect accuracy to who is who and who is what in this argument. It's, it's because, like, let, like, let's say... Actually, you know what? Fuck it. This is a perfect example. So, you see how the engraving is kind of a little bit different? It kind of looks a little bit different? Because mm -hmm. the smaller? But... Sent... Something tells me... I don't know how to explain this without just, like, sounding like a douchebag. Nah, just say but, it, man. Say, say what's on your mind. <coughs> I mean, he could very well have put the engraving in after he found out about it originally. There's no pro tell proving telling when that happened. Yeah, because mm. at that point it could be hearsay. Yes. Yeah. Indeed. But the problem is that if the article is correct and he and freedom is correct and he said i'm going to use this model from disney but it wasn't engraved at the time and he engraved it he technically stole disney's model mm-hmm it kind of reminds me of uh remember the finding nemo incident mm -hmm. yeah you know what i'm talking about uh, not really <clears throat> so there was a big court case when it came to Finding Nemo. Because at the time, <clears throat> it was basically about a book. So it's about this French author over in uh, France. He wrote a book about basically a fish, a clownfish, losing his father. So his mother took him on a trip, uh, you know, a journey, or his mother went on a journey to go find, or I'm sorry, I think the kid went on a journey to go find him. So basically, basically you know, it sounded a lot like, you know, Finding Nemo. And there was a big court case. There was some, you know, the, the publisher was looking for a certain amount of money. <clears throat> um, yeah, it was a big deal uh, whenever Finding Nemo came out, especially like, you know, Finding Nemo at the time was like, what, the highest grossing animated film at the time? I think. Yeah, I don't it think was I ever heard about that somewhat, somewhat yeah. high grossing. Yeah. So let me guess Disney won that one. Yeah, they they won that one because. For, for sure. Yeah, because even though he was during writing, like he was writing it and it was actually was about to go into publishing, Nemo came out already. Mm hmm. That makes sense. So technically, because of the timing, he stole Disney's work. I see now. Got yeah, yeah, but um, but like he was showing like records saying he was writing it before Disney released it, so it, it's amazing, um, you know. And it's not too uncommon to be real with you, <clears throat> you know. Uh, if you ever go to a film festival, you're going to see people with like three or four uh, movies of the same film. So, <clears throat> I mean, it's it's kind of hard. It's really hard to get an original idea. It really is. Um, yeah. That's the reason why when I get, like, my original ideas for certain little, like, creations of mine, they're mostly going to be, like, for animation or, like, those old, like, like combination movie type things where you just is, like, it's like an Avengers type of deal with my thing that I've currently created with Dimensions About the Stars. It's currently at a fan fiction phase, though I am going into <coughs> the idea of animation and eventually getting into full like animation drafting for this whole thing main point is is that an idea that you have you can create you can be inspired you just don't steal from others you can only ever do that if you're writing it as a non-fictional universe that is not connected in any way to the main story and it goes off on its own thing from the main point that you're taking it from so um, I posted. Uh, I mean, you guys should, might be able to see it on the screen. I posted some video, uh, a couple of pictures. Um, the Star Wars hotel photos actually got uh, leaked. I like some of the things that's going on. Well, that's that's stupid. The toilet should actually be something futuristic. It shouldn't just be a bum ass I, toilet. I ain't gonna lie though. The the TP looks like a uh, duct tape. Can you imagine putting duct tape on your rear? <laughs> <laughs> The the, the 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 main like b the main area where you're supposed to have dinner and everything that looks good that looks good they it just needs a little bit more of a star wars feel i would prefer it if i would prefer if they just decide to take the clone wars ship the um 
what is that one that uh, Duchess Satine rides on in season two? I think it's the Concord. It would have been I much better remember. if they if they made a ship similar to that. The Concord. You know, the funny, you know what the funny part is? I can imagine like Beavis and Butthead right now with that bathroom. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Would you like to see the, 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 the toilet is speedy and hard. Oh my god. I'm the great Coholio or something. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> oh man, this is great. I don't know why, but that mental image came to mind as soon as I saw that roll of tape. Because that's pretty much what it looks like, is a roll of duct tape. It looks, it looks more silvery duct tape, in my opinion, because it just... Is it really, is it really a metal thing that's supposed to be for, like, toilet paper, or is that like a tissue box? I wonder what like space, I wonder what space paper feels like. Maybe a mini starlight space. comes out of there. <laughs> Oh, I... Oh, no. The Mortis gods created this incredible element that is known throughout the universe as space paper. No pocket sand. What about, um... See, the thing is that... So, Disney... I forgot to mention this earlier. So, Disney is actually opening up their hotel to bloggers, reviewers, influencers early. Um, I think, actually, yesterday they started... And I can't wait for the uh, this hotel is shit review. Yeah, but they're doing it for free. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, so those people are staying, you know, four thousand to six thousand dollars rooms for free. Now I'll be real with you, the beds are actually bigger than I thought. And the um I should have posted pictures of the room. Yeah, post pictures of the bed something. Yeah. Um and the bed or the room is supposed to look like a yeah, if you guys ever been on a cruise ship, it looks like like a regular like room um there's 16 rooms on each level on each uh floors so it's actually kind of small if you think about it it's not a really big hotel interesting Six, 16 rooms per floor um 16 rooms per floor that's that's not a lot but that's that would be customary towards like a starship design yeah of any classification yeah um so the itinerary, man, I don't know. The itinerary just destroy droids. I'm not buying. <laughs> no, but you could, but you could block a flashlight with your lightsaber. Could we just get like a giant Luker Hulk space station or something? No, no as a hotel. No. If I don't get any droidicas. Where are no, I that's the only way you can get droidicas because you need a Luker Hulk. You don't need a Luker Hulk. Well, I would well, love yes to have a. No, I, a munificent. I would love to have a munis munificent as my own. I would love a B1 battle droid to be like my butler and, and be named Roger Roger. Oh, oh, wait. <laughs> oh, God! What's up? Remind me of those later. Are you sure the pictures in the convention or no? Yeah, uh, the convention. Yeah, the convention uh, I went to a couple years back. No, no, you never showed me that. Interesting. Oh, that's right. I thought I did. I would love a B. I would. I would like a B two battle droid, except it basically talks like Zeon Daikun. Somebody B one and walks around and everything. I know you got like the clones screaming for the Republic, and the droids are like for the Separatists, and you got that one droid that's like Zeke Zeon. For the Separatist, <laughs> for the Separatist Alliance. You know what? I would like. I would like a super battle droid. With jetpacks, armor made out of Beskar, has the knowledge of a protocol droid, has the te technological capabilities of an astromech, and has a built-in dark saber. And it only activates on my voice. You're acting you way too me. much. Wanna, well, actually, there me. is. How, how about this? It's not, you it's pay. Not you pay six thousand dollars. You go and you go to Galaxy Edge and you pay another. I mean, for your what you're asking, you pay another two thousand dollars to build your own droids. By the way, you can build your own droids. That's a thing, man. Like you're going to Galaxy's Edge already to get all that shit. Why? Why spend six thousand dollars if you could spend three hundred dollars, or the price of admission at least? 
or whatever the how much the tickets cost and just go to Galaxy's Edge instead. Man, I'm telling you. Galaxy's Edge dressed up as General Grievous instantly. A better idea would be to, oh, I don't know, just, even though it is, like, even more expensive, just hollow out one of those Japanese, like, um, love girl robots, and then just hollow them out and then make them into protocol droids. You have a vast market after that. That, that sounded so bad on so many levels. I know it <laughs> sounded so bad, but you can literally just turn those things into the actual, to an actual life form with their own government and everything. Look, the way that Halo oh, is going, like kind of you, we might see like the droid army in Halo. Oh, great. So, yeah. Okay, with the first thing that you just said, droid army in Halo, that doesn't exist. It's oh, more the Prometheans, if you want to go technically and by then, they're mostly just digital cyborgs. So what you're telling me is we need to build weeb cyborgs and put them in Galaxy that gotcha. No, just hollow out basically, just hollow out a Japanese robotic girlfriend, hollow it out of all those extra features that they put in, make it completely mechanical, and just have a whole bunch of parts on it for droid skin. Uh, I'm sorry, either Star but, uh, Wars and everything. I don't think Disney's gonna go for that idea. They kind of have to. It's the only. It's the only thing that could actually work. They could afford paying out the tons. They could afford paying fifty thousand. Fifty thousand, no more, no less. Uh, dollars. You know what? If, if I go to Galaxy's Edge, I don't want to see no sex toy talking to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so have a little sexy R two D two. Mm. bringing you that uh <laughs> i think i think uh, one of the reviewers was talking about the drinks it was a uh putting the ass in astromech okay I'm oh here. yeah i'm out too <laughs> but hey no i got a question though um zaku would i think you should be present when uh caleb anderson the guy who who's keeping um battle operation troy alive i think i think you should be on on the uh, next podcast for that one and when do you want him to do that? Because he said he had to be on his time because he is uh, moving to another place. Yeah, yeah. And I, I told him I totally understand. We could always reschedule. I told him it's not a big deal. I mean, I understand everybody, you know, has to be doing something in their personal lives. So ain't nothing wrong with that. So I told him I'd be more than happy to reschedule. Um, so is but, it going on next week then? Or? Um, I haven't yet to confirm that, to be honest with you. Yeah. So It would be very interesting to meet him. Oh, for sure, for sure. I'm dying to meet him. He, he's, he's, he's. I talked to him for a little bit. It's a really great guy, nice guy. Now you were explaining just a little earlier about the whole Lord of the Rings era. What era are they touching that they're not supposed to be touching in the first place? Something about the Second Age. Um, okay, Second. Why? Why specifically does the Tolkien family? Do not want to touch that age when the books have already explained this. I think Maybe that's, that's why. That, that could be why. Uh, apparently, I found out that um, as part of the NDA, which the the, um, the Lord of the Rings expert was fired over disclosing it, he said the uh, the Tolkien family is very um, protective of what needs to be talked about. So they specifically told Amazon, "Don't talk about this era. Don't talk about that era. You know, you could talk about whatever's in this timeline." So I think they kind of like um, went in between and talking, you know, bringing a little bit of this in and bringing a little bit of that in. So that's why the that's why they say that's what he was fired over. Well, that's a little unfortunate due to the factor of that, but it's good on the family for keeping these things on their wraps and at least trying to do everything perfectly. Something yeah, tells me this series is going to get canceled within one. Day. I think so too. Yep. I think so too. Though, though this would really put the shame of the idea that we won't be getting an actual HD version of Numenor. No, oh, well, yeah. I, you know, if this does get canceled one season, we ain't getting any more Lord of the Rings TV series. If I was talking to him, it'd be like, because of this Amazon deal, no one gets any TV series. How about that? Well, then here's a here's another idea. Why don't you just do it in Lego? <laughs> 
I, they actually I did mean, do Lord I of the Rings Lego. There, 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 yeah. yeah, you can do a Lord of the Rings Lego. You could definitely do it over basically this time period. Lego can be... You can turn Lego into a very mature, fair series well, when you want problem. to. If you're going to do it off of Lego, you got to mumble. I want to see some bearded dwarves. I don't you want to can't. see any mumbling dwarves. No, bearded. Yeah. Be I, no, no, no. You don't One it. more Gimli's. All the old Lego games, they didn't talk, they mumbled. Yeah, oh, I know the oh. old Lego. It was only in Lego Batman 2 when they started. The main point is, if you can't do it in live, if you can't do it in live action, then you might as well just do a stop animation type of history of the Second Age going from this Amazon TV series instead. This I'm might sorry. end up being better. Well, that's I'm what they sorry. did in the 80s, didn't they? The 70s and 80s, they, they made an actual cartoon of Lord of the Rings. Yeah, they did. They made yeah. a lot of weird cartoons. They made a Super Mario cartoon. They made a Legend oh, of Zelda yes. cartoon. Oh, yes. <laughs> no, he, says, he said the cartoon. He said the cartoon is Super Mario, not the live action movie. Yeah, it's <laughs> not the live action movie where they basically they grew up in Brooklyn. Oh, the yeah. Cartoon, the, cartoon, the cartoon was the 80s. I think the movie was actually the early 90s. I remember yep, watching it was, that when I was a kid. It was the early 90s. Really? The fact that we're getting. To just go off topic again with this entire thing, the fact that we're getting like movies that are part of those types of universes, like right now with like the new Sonic movie and everything, is really interesting. We're getting all these properties that are from the 90s and everything for video games, and we're getting them as movies. We could be eventually seeing like a Metroid movie eventually. I would uh -oh. love to see a Metro movie. I would, really? really, I would I love a Metro movie. movie. Like, <laughs> like eventually. I'm just saying. I, I would like just to at least hear about the fact that some company out there could be making a Metroid movie. <laughs> as long as Nintendo has full is is fully backing it, and it's not under some dumb thing like, what was it? What who's Paramount? None of that garbage. You know I'm all for game movies that are under their own, that are made under their own company. Company, but if I'm it's not, like something that's like, do you guys remember well, with Godzilla in 1998? I like that one. Talk about, we don't you like talk that about one. Oh machine. well, I liked it. Well, I liked it. I know, like whenever, uh, so the United States was like, hey, we really want to make a movie of that. So um, whenever they came out, you know, the creator was so was so disappointed on how the U.S. treated. You know, Godzilla that, you know, he nicknamed it Zilla because, you know, he don't really consider mm. it as a Godzilla that whenever he made uh, the 2001 version, what is it like? Godzilla uh, Final Wars. I think that's cool. Yeah, Final Wars. That was hilarious. Bro, he picked up Zilla and threw him through a building and just uh, used a ton of breath and nuclear bombed his ass. <laughs> it, was funny. So it was funny, too, because right after that, the main villain was like, yeah, maybe we shouldn't have picked that tuna fish. <laughs> Like that. Hey, they really gave Zilla the middle finger. <laughs> they really did. <laughs> they really did him dirty on that one. Yeah, well, and I gotta find the actual line now. Yeah, go ahead. No, so the thing is this: um, it's like Sonic. It really depends on who's directing. It really depends uh, who has their nose and, and ears all around um, the production. It, <laughs> yeah. it is true. It is really true. Bro, bro, I watched. I tried watching Sonic. A few days ago. <laughs> Which one? The live action? Yeah, I couldn't even make it past the halfway point. I really like the live action. I think it's probably... I didn't even yeah. finish it. I I'm only going to be excited for the second one. Because the second one has more plot. And they're going to go with the whole idea of Knuckles being an idiot in this one. Which I, I also, by the way, Idris Elba as Knuckles. Best casting decision that they have. <laughs> that's going to be funny. Agree, that's I actually going to be funny as hell. I agree Why with that as well. Like, I need your power. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's really good. Mm. I really think that they really respect Sonic. Except the fact they, they try to bamboozle us with the, with the early Sonic design. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Just, it was, it was I, respectful I up to, to that I point. Need to like, I need to look like a human version of Lightning McQueen. For this movie, I that's wanted to knock every that's single what they teeth. Want for their heads. I wanted to rip every single teeth out of that. That 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 haunted my dreams for at least a month. But, you know what's you know what's Nicholas, a good reimagining? Nicholas Cage version of that. It's stupid, but it works. No, but you know what show is actually funny as hell? Hmm. Sonic what? Boom. 
Oh, oh, that show was actually that show was actually pretty good. I actually enjoyed that one. Pretty meta, actually. It was actually yeah, it was actually pretty like it was a whole <laughs> new thing, but it, they did a good job. They remained consistent. Yeah. Everything was consistent. Hey, Even what, Shadow they, showing up Jordan was the they, funniest thing ever, man. What was that? What oh, was the actual goodness. quote? What was the quote? <sighs> they sort of made it consistent. However, I feel it also because this came around and showed up also on like Cartoon Network and eventually Boomerang and everything. So S Sonic Boom was more or less the Teen Titans go of Sonic. Yeah. I, it, it really it really did feel like very underwhelming like for a Sonic series. Like I was hoping this would be like a a new generation, like generation free of Sonic where everything would actually change. But the main point is is that with each of these companies making their own versions of their own things, they're doing it in ways that are paying respect while also at the same time giving good reason for everything that they're doing. The new Sonic movie, is, I guess, trilogy is going to be really interesting, especially when they get into, like, probably more, like, ancient civilizations and everything with these with this franchise, like how they do with the Michael Bay Transformer movies. Now, they were bad... But some of them, towards their fans, like Transformers 3, are still really considered good movies in general. The main thing that I'm trying to say with this is that with the whole stance going back to Lord of the Rings and everything with this stance, if the Tolkien family is actually pressing this hard down, then Amazon, just make it out of, just make the trilogy that the, you don't want, that they don't want you to touch out of something different than live action. Just make it something more fanfare. That way it could ease their tensions or ease their hearts or something. And maybe they could relent. I do know the, um, the writers of the show, this is actually the first credible, um, work. There's two writers, um, which I believe that, um, they... uh, all right. I found it. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. What is it? It was, I knew that two and a head wasn't up to much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But for the writers, though, you know, the writers, you know, said that, you know, Amazon picked them because, you know, they believe uh, Amazon believes of what they're doing. And that's great. But the thing is, like, you know, if you get two people like that, you know, they're going to they're going to do whatever they have to do in order to get that credit. Because being credited for Lord of the Rings. Oh, Man, I'm telling you, that'd be great. That'd be a great resume. Mm-hmm. It, it goes it right. Be a, it'd be a great resume. You just gotta make sure you're fitting within the time frame, and you're not going to go in your own direction that literally overshadows the movies and is creating a new continuity of the movies and everything. Because, I think. I'm sorry. Because if you go from that point of view. You're just going to end up creating more problems than you do answers. Stick with the original continuity and don't and don't change what ain't broke. That's right. I mean, I and I really think that's why um, when it came to Star Wars, they really took the books and made them legends because they're like, man, we don't have to deal with this. We, we'll do our own. I really do think, uh, in a way, it is like that. Um, but for Lord of the Rings, though, like I'm gonna talk more in depth about production. Um, this is what. How long has this been in the talk for? About five, six years, at least. Hmm. Probably less. Um, that Possibly. you know, yeah. And they spent like over two hundred fifty million dollars to get the license, just the license. I really don't. I really hope that they're not spending a billion dollars just to you know push agendas, narratives, or. Um, you know, like their own store. And they already said, Amazon already said, like, you know, we're, you know, doing this basically, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but, you know, they're, they're basically saying, like, you know, we're doing this for us. Yeah. Also, we kind of need to make it to where you can have, you can have good characters, but they have to be written, well-established characters within the universe. You can semi-make new characters within this universe, but you can't, they have to be killed off, or they have to be either be known within the universe already or within the books as a sort of group and everything. This is the category in which you kind of might want to take notes from, like, this podcast, Amazon. You need 
to make sure that you're not overshadowing the movies and everything else that has come before within the books. You've got to make sure you stick to continuity completely. Because if you don't, you end up with the problem that a viewer, like, for example, if you end up with the problem of going into the Gundam universe and you start out with the original series and then you head all the way to, like, Double Zero. And then you realize, if he's part of the same continuity, what the hell? No, nah, no, nah, that's like, that's the equivalent of going over from the original Gundam to uh, skipping straight the narrative and being like, what the heck is going on here? Exactly. It's it's the main thing. You've got to stick to continuity. Everything has to follow a timely pace. Everything has to have an order. You I... can somewhat push agendas, but they have to kind of be, you know, put under the burial ground because Christopher Tolkien and along with Jared Tolkien were Christian. So you kind of have to put in that mindset that nothing of this new age type stuff like for example because i know i'm going to be slandered for this by saying this here and now but i'm saying this in general you can't have a lot of, you can't have probably maybe not even at all any gayness within the lord of the rings because it doesn't exist there's no room Slander this man Slander Whoa. Him. No, I mean it, it's. I, I'm, I'm giving you shit. I yeah, there wasn't. Yeah. yeah, there wasn't any like of that in the original three movies or in the Hobbit series. It was mostly, it was mostly, man and woman loving each other type of stuff that you could get Are within you sure the Lord it wasn't of the Rings. The Hobbits loving the ring. <laughs> no, that's that's just that that's a selfless love for evil. And that's and that's, and, and that's what I'm talking. And that's what I was talking about. Um, you know they're you know they're they're going against the lore they're not following like respecting the uh the stories the family's uh wishes that's what really got me worried about the whole thing you know i'm mm -hmm. i'm i'm in depth on like keeping things as they are um it's not that i don't like change you know i think change it could be a good thing but i think that change belongs to tolkien mm-hmm belongs towards the person who created the series unfortunately he is gone but his children can later somewhat reveal things kind of like Christopher Tolkien did when he released eventually the unfinished tales oh no I'm sorry but I'm probably and... about to ruin this Lord of the Rings discussion as soon as I mentioned the golem thing I immediately thought of that fucking robot chicken parody called Elijah <laughs> <laughs> well I'm sorry. Uh, Alright, and look, I, I want to go ahead and um, ask his one last question before we end the show, since we're over the time. Of course. Um, one last question. So, would you consider yourself like a major fan, Kaizen, of uh, to Lord of the Rings, like a really big fan? I consider myself a good fan of Lord of the Rings. I don't consider myself a big fan. I would... I would eventually like either because I am six foot four and I would try to like dress up as like Gandalf the Grey and actually <laughs> go to the Shire because I can fit in the costume. I would just have to basically like grow a little bit of an actual beard, make everything grayish in general. I could still fit the bill and everything. I could even be I could even be like a background character or maybe even like dress up as like one of the men of Numenor and everything. Main thing is is that I'm a good I'm a good fan of Lord of the Rings. I'm not a huge fan. I am a good fan. I love the mythology of Lord of the Rings. I love that J.R. Tolkien took his time and did this and it's got me to create my own series known as Dimensions by the Stars, which in itself is its own series with its own characters and pretty much it has its own universe. I won't go into depth for this podcast. Maybe in a future future podcast I can explain when I have more concrete stuff that I can show everyone here. Yeah, since we're low on time. So mm -hmm. but 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 you know a lot about it, you know, compared like, I know a lot about it because hey, of the yeah. YouTubers and I love listening to a lot of the people who who are a part of this universe. And that, that tells me that you, you respect it. 
and I I respect it. I I respect it to the point of watching other people only like they watching other people like Mahler, for example. He's another famous YouTuber who did like a a free episode series known as EFAP Every Frame a Pause on Lord of the Rings, and they were literally joking about the series. They weren't hating, joking. They were just they were love love joking with it, like going with the idea that Gandalf and the battle between Gandalf and Saruman in the first, like, Lord of the Rings movie, Fellowship of the Ring, is just Gandalf high off weed, and he's just <laughs> in some sort of farm, just spinning on the ground, and Leslie is like, who's Saruman? I love, I, I really love Gandalf, but you guys heard it, I mean, he's a fan, I mean, he doesn't consider himself a big fan, but he is a fan, he mm -hmm. respects the, um, he does respect the lore, the continuity of Tolkien, and I really hope Amazon, like I said, I really wanted, if it's good, it's good. You know what I mean? And if they respect it, man, more power to them. Um, you know, that's all I, that's all I ask is keep it good. Keep it respectful. And we'll hopefully we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's all we have for tonight, guys. Thank you for tuning in, uh, to Gundam Space Engineers podcast. You guys may be off of duty. So, all right. Mm -hmm. Bye guys. Or Mars Zeon. Forever. Bye, okay time. Man, I wish the Federation, you know, what was it like? Uh, to the fe to the Earth or whatever. I, I don't see. Know. <laughs> you, Goodbye, you guys. Already, you already <laughs> said too much by saying Federation in that sentence. So I think.